I'm Dave Freilich. Thanks for watching this Crime Watch YouTube exclusive where we take a look back at recent crime stories that have been making headlines in our area and across the state. A man accused of kidnapping and sexually assaulting a woman is now behind bars. Austin police say that victim was waiting on the side of the road for help after her tire blew out. Fox 7 Austin's Amanda Ruiz has more. Last Thursday at 3.30 in the morning, police got a call from a woman screaming for help, saying she had just been sexually assaulted. According to the affidavit, the woman told police she had been waiting for roadside assistance in northeast Austin for just over an hour when a man in a white SUV pulled up. The woman needed help with a blown out tire and the man tricked her into thinking he was there for that. The affidavit says the suspect got the victim into his passenger seat and told her he was going to take her to get a new tire. The suspect drove about 10 minutes north to an apartment complex parking lot where he began sexually assaulting the victim. At first, the woman was unable to escape, but did send a friend her location asking for help. But the woman was able to get out of the car and ran away calling 911. The suspect fled the scene, but seven hours later, police returned to the parking lot and saw a man who matched the suspect description leaving one of the apartments. The man police say is Ronaldo Tapia Arcibar. He was arrested and charged with kidnapping and sexual abuse. Michael Bullock, president of the Austin Police Association, says he's glad Tapia Arcibar was caught for the victim's peace of mind. It's, it's tragic and not something anyone should ever have to go through. Bullock adds the victim's quick thinking was a job well done in this situation, and that was sharing her location. If someone's location is being shared, then we're able to live track where they are, and it's a lot easier for us to get there more quickly. Uh, what she did is something that's very helpful uh, to us to be able to get there a lot quicker. So it's very very smart thinking on her part. He says if you ever find yourself waiting for roadside assistance and feel unsafe, call 911. An officer will come and wait with you. He also adds that certain roads fall under the Text.Hero Hero program, which provides free roadside assistance. If you do call roadside assistance, make sure you ask, you know, the name of who's coming out, what kind of car you can expect them to show up in. Uh, good things to have ahead of time. Amanda Ruiz, Fox 7 Austin News. An hours-long SWAT standoff in southeast Austin turned into an officer-involved shooting. The driver of a stolen vehicle went into a business and refused to come out, leaving a suspect dead. And around 12.30 on May 21st, Austin police spotted a stolen vehicle near the intersection of Salt Springs and Thaxton. The suspect drove to a nearby gas station and barricaded themselves inside. Officers went into the store, spotted the, sus the suspect holding a gun, and demanded they drop their weapon. They didn't, and the SWAT team was called in. During the standoff, an employee told officers another employee was still trapped in a locked office inside the store. APD fired pepper ball rounds into the store, hoping to get that suspect out. Instead, they shot at officers and poured lighter fluid around the store. That incident was recorded on officers' cameras, and per APD policy, that footage will be released within 10 days. The officers who fired their weapon will be placed on administrative duty. Cargo theft is on the rise in Texas with no sign of slowing down. Analysts say technology has helped with the sophisticated fraud schemes. Fox 7 Austin's Meredith Aldis has the details. Caught on camera, a man walks up to this 18-wheeler. A van pulls up beside it. Out comes a man with bolt cutters. The lock is cut, then they're busy stealing the items inside. It's become a very lucrative industry for the bad, the bad guys. Cargo theft in Texas is one of the regional hotspots with a 22% uptick from this time last year. The faster and more efficiently we can move goods through the supply chain, the faster the bad guy can steal it. Data analysts say technology has changed the way thieves are getting the goods. We live in that virtual world now where there's no face-to-face, hand-to-hand transactions anymore of, okay, you post the load, the, a person that you hope is who they say they are looks at it, says, that works for me. They click on it. You click on it. The paperwork all is sent electronically, PDF. They go pick up the load and they're gone with it. They're looking for small appliances, liquor, energy drinks, solar panels, virtual reality headsets, and copper. Things in demand right now. CargoNet estimates a total of $154.6 million worth of goods were stolen during the first quarter this year. These costs are now going to be passed to the consumer at some point in time. We're going to come to a breaking point where nobody's going to be able to get insurance. 
Transportation companies are working to fight the issue. The last two years, um, it has been you know, so much of a concern. Uh, we've had to create entire departments that do nothing but combat and uh, you know, plan for the best ways to deal with it. He says his company has a strict carrier vetting process, a checklist when the carrier and truck shows up to the facility to ensure they are who they say they are, and one person oversees the entire process. And truck drivers learn from this video. Be careful where you're parking and don't leave the truck unattended. Cargo theft is a felony. If the total value of the cargo involved is $200,000 or more, it's a first degree felony. Meredith Aldis, Fox 7 Austin Crime Watch. Travis County Sheriff's Office says a man took his, el his dog outside for a walk when he was shot and killed. The victim's been identified as 49 year old Stephen Mark Peterman. The shooting happened around 4 in the morning on Amarillo Avenue in Northwest Austin on May 22nd. The victim's wife woke up to gunshots, found the dog at the front door and her husband laying in the road. Detectives used a handprint from the scene and surveillance video to identify the suspect. 36 year old William Daniels from San Antonio was arrested for murder. Deputies believe he was burglarizing the victim's vehicle. Case isn't over for the against the former Army Sergeant who shot and killed a Black Lives Matter protester in downtown Austin in 2020. Governor Abbott recently pardoned Daniel Perry after a jury found him guilty of murder. Though he still faces a misdemeanor charge for deadly conduct. Fox 7 Austin Meredith Aldis has more. Daniel was thrilled and elated. Uh, we always believed this day would come. Daniel Perry was freed. Governor Greg Abbott pardoned him on Thursday after unanimous recommendation from the Texas Parole Board. Abbott saying Texas has one of the strongest stand your ground laws of self-defense that cannot be nullified by a jury or progressive district attorney. Travis County DA Jose Garza says the board and the governor have put their politics over justice and made a mockery of our legal system. Perry was convicted last year of murdering Garrett Foster, who had been legally carrying an AK-47 while marching in a Black Lives Matter protest in 2020. Garrett was not a threat ever. The only thing that happened is Daniel Perry ran through a red light into a crowd of people. Perry was working as a rideshare driver then when he turned his car into a street crowded with demonstrators and shot Foster before driving off. Perry claims he acted in self-defense, but was ultimately found guilty. Just four days later, the defense filed a motion for a new trial, claiming there was jury misconduct and outside influence that tainted the deliberation process. I think, you know, if the court was to deny the new trial motion, I, I, I think it sends a message to jurors that, you know, it is okay to do outside research during a trial and try to determine what you can from the internet. You, know, you might as well have internet trials. The motion was denied. Perry was sentenced to 25 years. I hope that this prison sentence changes you. I hope that you see the damage that you've caused one day. But until then, I hope what you have seen and heard in this courtroom plays in your head constantly and that it haunts you. There are no winners in a case like this, but our job is to keep fighting. And Perry may have to continue to. He faces a misdemeanor deadly conduct charge. The maximum punishment is a year in jail. Perry already served more than that. Perry is scheduled for a pretrial conference coming up in July. Fox 7 reached out to the Travis County Attorney's Office and is still waiting to hear back. A woman's been arrested after attacking another woman with a metal pole in East Austin. According to the arrest affidavit, an officer was at the scene of a different incident back on May 14th when he heard a disturbance nearby. He says he found 30-year-old Naomi Castillo holding a metal pole and swinging it in several people's direction. One victim said she'd been sitting in a chair on the sidewalk when Castillo approached her and sat next to her. When she asked Castillo to move, Castillo stood and pushed her. The victim attempted to cross the street when she said Castillo swung the pole hitting and cutting her arm and dislocating her pinky. Castillo was arrested and charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. For decades now, the Williamson County Sheriff's Office has been looking for answers in the death of 24-year-old Jessica Harris. Libby Farrow has more on that story.
On August 2nd, 1994, a local resident was checking their property fence line when he found a dead body on his property. The body was uh, off the roadway and kind of in some taller grass. Uh, he contacted the sheriff's office immediately and the sheriff's office responded to investigate it. The body belonged to 24 year old Jessica Harris. She was a South Austin native now dumped on the site of County Road 245 in Williamson County. Her body was sent by the judge to the Travis County Medical Examiner's Office where they ruled her death as a homicide caused by strangulation. If she hadn't been there too long, uh, her body was not in an advanced stage of decomposition. The officers and detectives on scene at the time uh, took her fingerprints and she was identified through the APHIS database as Jessica Lee Harris. Fox 7 had the opportunity to speak with Jessica's mom, Joyce, in 2018. She recently passed away but told our reporter about the last time she saw Jessica. I hugged her and I said, I didn't want to do this. I hugged her and I said, I'm, I'm making your favorite dinner. She liked pork chops. After dinner, Jessica was picked up by a friend and they headed to 6th Street. So some of the bars that Jessica was known to frequent prior to her death around Austin were the Back Room, Black Cat, and Joe's Generic Bar. What detectives want to know is how and why she ended up in Georgetown. We're actually looking for a tie to this area. She did not have any known association with the Georgetown area. She was primarily in and around Austin. Unfortunately, her mother never got answers, but the Williamson County Sheriff's Office won't give up on finding out what happened to Jessica. If you have any information about the murder of Jessica Harris, you can call the Williamson County Sheriff's Office or Williamson County Crime Stoppers. One man's behind bars in Travis County for repeatedly ramming his car into a vehicle several times with children inside. It happened around 8 a.m. on May 13th. Officers went out to a collision involving a man rear-ending another car. Caller said the driver aggressively and repeatedly rammed into a blue Honda before driving off. He later crashed into a utility pole. A mother and her four children were all in that Honda. All five of them were hurt. Police were able to track the perp down suspect as he attempted to flee the scene. He was identified as 34 year old Carl Pearson. He was charged with accident involving injury and evading arrest. Police have arrested the boyfriend of a missing New Braunfels woman and charged him with her death. Fox 7 Austin's Angela Shin has the latest on that case. A year after Flores' disappearance, police announced her boyfriend has been charged with capital murder after an investigation spanning multiple counties and two states. 19-year-old Andreana Flores disappeared on May 19th, 2023. Right away, those close to her knew something wasn't right. I was devastated and I was in shock, actually, because at first it was, you know, we just knew she was gone and she would have never left her babies and she would have never left her mom. So we knew right away something was wrong. Tabitha Rich was a teaching assistant in Flores' classroom from first to fifth grade and kept in touch with her even after she left elementary school. She was a really sweet girl, very, very sweet. Um, she loved making anybody smile. She was a really good mom. She was a great mom. She loved her baby. She, um, she loved her mama. She was a mama's girl. The New Braunfels Police Department says after an investigation that spanned San Antonio, Bear County, Laredo, and New Mexico, her boyfriend, 25-year-old Gilberto Sepulveda of San Antonio, has been arrested and charged for her murder. He's also facing charges of continuous family violence and repeated violation of a protective order. The details of her murder haven't been released. I'm glad that he's arrested. Um, I hope that somehow he allows um, closure like he tells us where she's at so his her mom can get closure and her babies could have closure because her mom will never stop fighting for her. The New Braunfels Police Department is encouraging anyone dealing with domestic violence to reach out for help. Their victim services can help with legal advocacy, crime victims compensation claims and referrals. Hopefully there's other women in her could see her situation and see that sometimes you don't always get out like you know, to, if you're in that situation, to seek some type of help. 
and Sepulveda is being held in the Comal County Jail on a $813,000 bond. In New Braunfels, Angela Shen, Fox 7 Austin News. Again, if you know someone or if you are in an abusive relationship, you can visit safeaustin.org or text the number you see right there on your screen. Help is available at both of those resources 24-7. The Travis County Sheriff's Office is investigating a violent death in Northwest Austin. It happened around 4 a.m. on May 20th on Amarillo Avenue near McNeil and Palmer. Deputies went out to a welfare check call and when they got there, they found a man in his 40s who'd been shot. He was laying unresponsive in the street. They started CPR, but he died at the scene. Maynard police have arrested an alleged Porch Pirate, they say in September 2023, Melissa Gonzalez was caught on camera stealing mail from a house. Mail theft is generally a misdemeanor, but it can be elevated to a felony, depending on how many addresses are targeted. Maynard police haven't said if this was an isolated incident for Gonzalez. Texas State University is partnering with the Attorney General's Office to create the Texas State Cold Case Team. This will allow criminal justice students to help investigate unsolved crimes. Fox 7 Austin's Angela Shen has more. Four Texas state students will take what they learned in the classroom to the attorney general's office cold case and missing persons unit, sinking their teeth into unsolved cases in a new internship program, the first of its kind in Texas. H. Jamie Elsass and legal counsel for the cold case unit looked at other programs like this out of state that have been successful. And I have students who are willing and able and intelligent. Let's put their skills to use. And so we decided at that point to start building this program, and we're just really excited about it. The AG's Cold Case and Missing Persons Unit started in 2021 to help law enforcement agencies across the state. A cold case is where all credible investigative leads are exhausted. As of 2020, there were more than 20,000 unsolved homicides in Texas. Students will work on two cases while being supervised by investigators. The specific cases haven't been announced yet. They're going to start from scratch. Completely fresh set of eyes here. The idea is for these students to really dig in and follow the protocols and work these cases. It's a competitive process. Only four students will be picked from the more than 100 that applied. They'll start in the fall with some trainings over the summer. And success looks different. So success, of course, might be solving a case. That's the ultimate pinnacle of success. But success could also mean um, something like excluding somebody who's been a suspect for 10 or 15 years and giving that person their life back. Success could also mean um, digitizing this overwhelming amount of information and triplicate of evidence that's all in paper form boxes. Any of this can be a step closer to making a cold case a closed case, which also means a step closer to justice. It's huge for us, but it also is a great way for us to give back to the victims of crime in this state. And I think that's really important um, in a field like criminal justice. That is a field of public service to ingrain that in our students. Angela Shen, Fox 7 Austin News. Appreciate you watching the Fox 7 Austin Crime Watch YouTube exclusive. Our Crime Watch stories run each Monday on Fox 7 Austin News at 9. If you miss them, you can watch anytime on our new Fox local connected TV app, which is free to download. You can watch on multiple platforms like Roku and Apple TV. Just scroll down from the live player and look for the Crime Watch section. And for more on the stories highlighted in this episode, you can head to our website, fox7austin.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the Fox 7 Austin YouTube channel.